Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer. In this video, I'll be taking you to the lab where the DeWalt line of bio-based chainsaw oil is made. I'll be touring the facility and showing you some opening shots of that and meeting with two chemists who will perform a few demonstrations to illustrate exactly why the DeWalt line is hands down the best on the market, even over its top petroleum counterparts. First up, you're going to see a flash test, which shows at what temperature an oil smokes and catches on fire. So make sure you stay with me and I'll take you there and show you the amazing results. So the cup is full to the line. There's a little indicator mark on there to show you how far to fill it. Right now what we want to do is to get this lit. And so what we're going to do is of course measure the, be able to observe the temperature reading on there as it heats up. So. Of course, right now, if you pass it over, nothing is going to flash because there's not enough vapors generated um, in the heating process. So we've got it turned on. And so at this point, we are just going to allow it to uh, uh, start warming and get itself up to temperature. definitely see it smoking now. Perfect. It's actually... It's saying it's hotter. Uh-huh. Well, it's reading the bottom, the hottest part, but it's not reading the... It's taking the hottest altogether, which is the bottom, but the the average throughout the cup is, is okay. 570. So, okay. average, right? 570. Yeah. You can hear it. You can hear it. Uh huh. Yeah. Next, you'll be seeing a pour point test, which measures how cold the oil can get before freezing and thickening. We're going to be comparing the DeWalt line next to two of the top competitors on the market, ones that you probably have in your chainsaw right now, so make sure you pay attention. <laughs> Okay, so this uh, in this freezer, uh, what we're going to do is measure the pour point um, of um, the DeWalt oil against uh, two different uh, competitor oils, uh, mineral oil-based oils, and see um, how well it, how well it will perform. This freezer is able to um, go down to approximately minus 60 degrees um, C. Um, but we don't need to go that far. So right now, um, as you can see, we're set at minus 26 degrees C, um, which is somewhere around minus uh, 15 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. So these are two competitor samples. This is the um, DeWalt sample of oil. They all look like popsicles. So in, <laughs> in the basic test, what we want to do is look at them and then turn them on the side and see how well they're pouring. We can see that, well, this is now has been open for a little bit, so it's uh, pouring a little bit. What is that? That doesn't... Um, this one is, is the... You can see it's flowing a little bit. This is the DeWalt. You can see that it's also flowing perhaps uh, much faster than the others were flowing. But you could see how well it is pouring even at, uh, this is at minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, whereas the other two competitors are more resistant, they're stiffer in terms of flowing at that temperature. Next is a four ball test, which calculates the friction and wear on the tool. It's done by taking ball bearings and loading them into a very special expensive machine. There are three ball bearings below in a bed of chainsaw oil and one suspended above. They touch and the whole base spins rapidly for 10 seconds and the results are studied. This was actually my favorite test and you won't want to miss the results, especially the one against the top competitor. If you don't have one, they're pretty expensive. I mean, it's hard to do what we do with that one. What is this test involved? So this is a, the four ball test. Um, so there's different ways to test friction and wear. 
Um, in this test method, what we do is we take three balls and we hold them in place. We take another ball bearing, put that on top, and we spin it at about 1800 RPM. And then we'll put a load on that, and that load can range from 100 pounds up to about 1500 pounds. So that's 100 to about 1500 pounds, that whole range over about the, the area of the head of a pin. So if you're talking 100 PSI is 100 pounds per square inch, we're talking 1800 pounds over the head of a pin. So extreme pressures is what we're testing for. Can uh, you get so, a shot of the balls? Yep. Yeah. So they're half inch diameter stainless steel, um, special type of stainless okay. steel. All right, so we put it in the cradle. We drop in three balls. So these will be our, our bottom balls that are gonna be fixed in place by this ring. This is a retaining ring. Here's our giant, uh, you know, hex. Wow. Is that the bowl? Yep. Uh, this is not. This is an off brand. And we're going to. free. Yeah. We're going to torque this down okay. to, I believe, 60 foot pounds. Okay. So that's torque. That's a specific amount of torque that's holding those balls so they don't slip. And then we're going to put our top ball into the jig. So this ball is going to sit and it's going to rotate. And it, the harder we push, eventually we're going to force the lubricant out and it's going to be the additives holding the two metal surfaces apart. So if we spin this hot enough and fast enough, we can actually melt the balls and weld them together with like a friction welding effect. And that's what we're trying to prevent. So we want additive chemistry that's gonna resist that. That's, that's your extreme pressure, uh, your heavy duty loading that you might put on between the chain and the bar. Okay. Is the first test going to be with the competitor brand or with DeWalt? First test will be with competitor because okay. I think that'll get us, that'll give us something to think about. Okay. Okay, so when I hit run, Probably within five seconds, this is going to start making a lot of noise. All right, I'm going to hit run. Three, two, one. Okay, and here's our readout. So it's a very short test, but we can see something like the temperature, the friction that's gone up as we trans start transmitting load from the top ball. And we can see our, our load is about what we've set it at. And then the speed, it, go it shoots up for 10 seconds and then it slows down. Now how hot is, ooh. So look at this, take a look at this. Yeah, so you can see that the uh, whole assembly now is stuck to the balls. It's up above the plate. Um, which yeah. means that the balls are now welded Toast. together. Yep. So it looks like we didn't get a seize on this run. Uh, sometimes, well actually we did, we had a seize and we just broke the balls free. So you can see the amount of damage under the surface of the liquid. But that fails and we also had a weld that was supporting the entire weight of this pot. This isn't, this isn't very, this is pretty heavy. So that's way, that's, you know, You've melted the metal, it's actually starting to run. You've smeared the metal, almost like clay. And this is the top ball that spins at about 1800 RPM. And you can see the metal's been chewed away. Take out the damaged ball bearings. And those are actually sharp. You actually melted, the metals flowed like water. It got so hot that it, the metal, the, it's like a, like a boundary, it just blows. You can see there's pieces of metal floating mm -hmm. in the cup. So these are pieces that are of, of melted metal that have been cast off, like slag. And so that's, you, 
basically what that would be doing to your tool. Yeah, especially um, if you have something like a recirculating oil system, not so much in a chainsaw, but that's gonna foul all the little kind of nooks and crannies along the chain. You know, that chain's coming back in through the machine right. and going back out again. all that stuff in with yep. it. So it accumulates. We're gonna um, now run um, um, the DeWalt product and we're going to go through the same process of setting up uh, the instrument. So we have um, clean um, test balls, and so we're going to make sure that they're dry, and we're going to start loading them into the uh, device here. So we're going to then load this ball into the instrument here. And get this pressed into place. We're going to clamp it down. And you can see the balls will drain the liquid off, but you can see that see there's damage. no smoking, there's very little damage. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to actually measure the scar on the balls. Um, they're so small that you really can't see them easily with uh, just your, your naked eye. So we have a special microscope that we're going to use to look at uh, what the uh, scar diameter and what the scar looks like. So we're going to put it into the machine, into the microscope, and we're going to then set our software to be able to look at it. So with the naked eye, you can't even really... No. I can't see, and I have good eyesight. No. So you can't so really you just see have the... like that where... Right. Very, just so, a small amount. So, the, so what we've done is we've aimed a microscope um, at the scar on one of the balls um, and this uh, circular portion is actually the area where um, the top ball um, in the machine actually came down and rested on one of the balls and started uh, generating a scar as it began to wear um, during the 10 second interval um, that the test ran. So what we could actually then do at this point is to get a measurement yeah, it's like, like destroyed. And that's what people don't get, right? Oil is not oil. It isn't. Okay, so we've not got created it, equal. So we've got it named. So what we need to do now is just capture that image, and then what we're going to do is select select the measuring device that we use to to measure the scar. And we're going to see how close we can come to getting a scar diameter. This is telling you right here now the um, diameter of the major and minor. So it's measuring across and it's measuring up and down um, the distance between uh, the ends of the scar. So this is in, measured in nanometers, which is equivalent to uh, 0.424 um, in terms of millimeters. So the scar diameter, the mean scar diameter, is actually 0 0.42 millimeters in diameter. So that is the scar. One, you need a microscope mm -hmm. to find the wear scar. Mm -hmm. The other is destroyed. Yeah, it's, quite it's definitely. <laughs> so we've spun the balls so fast that they actually weld together with huh. the, the heat of the friction. This is a failed mm -hmm. test that heated up within 10 seconds and fused onto itself. This is, of course, a competitor material. So 
um, the DeWalt material, the same conditions, um, the same load. Um, actually, the balls are not welded. Yeah, it's kind of hard to put them together to be able to see. But the balls are not welded. And there's only a very tiny scar on them. And I have one circled, but can't find it right now. But the point is, there's very little scarring on this, whereas the competitor material welded the balls together. And it has the proper additives in it to prevent uh, welding and prevent excessive wear to take place. Um, what this is also showing is that since the balls did not weld together, the fluid is much um, more capable of dissipating the heat generated. So if the heat is dissipated away from the metal surface, it's going to be provide much better lubrication and it's going to provide longer life for the bar because the fluid is taking away the heat generated. And that's a very important uh, very important thing to consider um, in a uh, in selecting a uh, barn chain chain oil. You can actually the friction between the balls as they move. This could be this simulates any two pieces of metal. It actually smeared the metal. That's how much pressure is being applied. Uh, so the heat the heat of the friction is hot enough to temper the stainless steel and actually get it to melt. So it loses temper, becomes soft, and flows. So this, is, this simulates you know, uh, an extreme condition, maybe you hit a nail or a burl or a, a bullet or something in the piece of wood that you're cutting and your, your chain locks up. This would be kind of an extreme case of, of, of damage uh, that we're trying to prevent using our additive chemistry in the, in the product. Last is a tech test, which studies how well the oil stays together. The test involves a vacuum above that sucks oil up below through a long tube. I'm going to include very close up shots, but just know that you're looking for a tiny stretched piece of oil that is about the width of a human hair. Um, the tackiness of the liquid just by putting some on my, on my fingers and you could see, you could see the tackiness of it. See the string that's forming as I separate my fingers. And this is something that you definitely want in a uh, bar and chain lubricant. So what I want to point out is that um, in a bar and chain loop, um, too much tack um, in the fluid can also be an issue. You do not want it to be too tacky as it may cause additional problems just in uh, proper running and proper dispensing of the fluid through the chainsaw to be able to oil that bar. I want to take it a little bit above 100, um, 100 mLs. So this is a, a test that we've developed actually a number of years ago and we found it to be very, very efficient and, and effective in demonstrating how um, tackiness uh, provides um, the tacky properties to a lubricant. So we're going to put this into the, into the t underneath here. And the bottom of this tube is set such that it is right at the 100 milliliter mark on the graduated cylinder. And so what will happen is that uh, because of the tachifier, when I turn on the vacuum, it will start pulling up the liquid and you will see the, a string of material that would be pulled up into this um, glass tube. That allows us to then get a measure because we can measure the difference between 100 and between um, where, where the actual string will break. And so we'll get a degree of tackiness of it. So right now we're letting it run. And you can see the fact that you can see a fine string of material or fluid being pulled up.
formula is not just the components, but it's how, how you blend it and wave to perfection. Right, so like these are high-end scales, right? Yeah, oh yeah. So take a picture of those because that's really important because everything is weighed in there. So as it's dropped in, it's weighed. These are these are actual scales. They're not yeah. just pedestals. They're high-end scales. So this is our K11. This is an actual production tank for making finished lubricants like, like the barn chain oil. So we'll show you down inside. So this is essentially like a big KitchenAid mixer. It's really not going that fast, but it kind of builds the vortex. So I hope you found these demonstrations as interesting as I did, and also that it demonstrates why the Dewalt Chainsaw Oil line is far and above and set apart from the petroleum products currently on the market. If you'd like to purchase this product, please see the links in the description of this video. I will include an Amazon link as well to my store. And also please get a hold of me on LinkedIn if you're a retail buyer interested in carrying this fabulous line in your stores and on your shelves. So as always, I thank you for watching and until next time, take care.